after saturation the water molecules will be consolidated into water droplets and then that will lead to hello everyone i am sanjeev kumar the faculty of polity and geography at yojana ias today i am going to discuss cyclone michong cyclone michong was in news recently from last one week the cyclone michong originated in bay of bengal around 100 km from the chennai in bay of bengal of the coast of chennai Andhra Pradesh, Visakhapatnam, Nellore, Guntur, etc. This cyclone was developed around in the night of 3 December over Bay of Bengal. Then gradually this cyclone moved towards the Chennai from here in northeast direction in this way. And this entire region covered by low pressure gusty rainy winds that carried by this cyclone which of it soon converted into a super cyclone received a speed of around 90 to 100 or even cross the 100 110 km per hour it started to move towards chennai towards visakhapatnam mainly within tamil nadu towards eastern coast andhra pradesh and odisha it is started to move then the cyclone michong in the morning on 4 december bring heavy rainfall means people experience sheet of water up to 15 20 cm of rainfall it get deposited around the localities and coastal areas by afternoon then water level started to increase on 4 december the water level reaches around thigh or you can say around 3 4 foot in surrounding areas in certain districts then this precipitation continued for few more hours and uh, it finally concluded or receded by the sample fire but it has created large havoc so we will now going to discuss what does mean by the cyclone how they are created what were the preparedness for the cyclone wow what kind of relief material extended by various forces or the government of tamil nadu and andhra pradesh then what are the mitigation strategy all such things we are going to discuss so first let's know what does mean by the cyclone what does mean by the tropical cyclone which paved and bay of bengal around 100 km from the coast of chennai in the night of 3rd december so what does mean by the cyclone cyclone you can see the air column or large air mass which having the swirling wind which consist the rotating wind at the center it has the lowest pressure towards outside towards outer margin of the cyclone it has the highest pressure so let's understand how the cyclone is created
this is the row zone ya region covered by the cyclonic wind now this region is known as the eye of cyclone the eye of cyclone having the lowest pressure and highest temperature contrary to it as we move away from the eye of cyclone around outer margins of the cyclone you have highest pressure and lowest temperature so wind will start to flow from high pressure towards low pressure wind will start to flow from high pressure towards low pressure towards the center point and these winds will be deflected by the coriolis force you know the coriolis force is an imaginary force technically it is not a force rather an effect means in northern hemisphere wind generally deflected towards right hand while in southern hemisphere wind are deflected towards the left hand so india lies in northern hemisphere suppose this is the earth here is the equator 0 degree latitude and this is 23 and half degree latitude 23 and half degree north and here is india line in this region india is line so here if wind are moving from this region to this region these winds will be deflected towards right hand means in the direction of wind we will need to keep our face and then towards right hand these winds will be deflected so this is the coriolis effect coriolis effect this coriolis effect is minimum at equator or zero near about zero at equator that's why over the equator generally cyclone does not arise as we move away from the equator then coriolis force continuously increases and become maximum around the pole so there is deflection of these winds like this is a these winds get deflected like this means having swirling motion here wind as we know that cyclone i having the lowest pressure and highest temperature so that's why you can consider uh the atmospheric pressure may be around 700 mb here millibar the unit of pressure atmospheric pressure as we move away from this center you can consider 800 mb here you can consider around 1010 10 mb here means at sea level on an average the atmospheric pressure is 1013 mb so this is the condition as we are moving away from the center the pressure is increasing so wind rises with very high speed vertically wind rises around the center and great convection current generated since this air mass since this air mass have generated over bay of ganga it has generated over bay of ganga and this is moving in the north east here yeah, in northern direction towards north or north northwest direction so here these winds will receive lot of moisture 
lot of moist wind will be accumulated and uh, with great vertical current these winds will rise to great height when these winds will reach us to height of around 10 to 12 km maximum then they will entirely saturate they will freeze after saturation the water molecules will be consolidated into water droplets and then that will lead to heavy amount of precipitation so some of the district in andhra pradesh and tamil nadu receive the rainfall within a single day up to 40 or 50 cm some of the district by the cyclone michon also receive amount of water more than 50 cm so that is leading to flooding like condition throughout the regions throughout the regions half of the lower body of people now submerged under the water lowland areas completely submerged under the water now the reservoirs are already filled and they are also guzzling out lot of amount of water which is further deteriorating the situation cyclone risk in india the cyclone risk in india you know the india has a very long coastline so india's coastline is very very lengthy around 7516 km coastline further you have andaman and nicobar and you have lakshadweep as well so this coastline particularly towards eastern side your tamil nadu pondicherry andhra pradesh odisha west bengal means four states plus one union territory is vulnerable for cyclone hazards further towards western coast particularly gujarat is more vulnerable with respect to cyclonic activity so this coastal the very large coastal region towards eastern side is more vulnerable we generally experience 3 to 4 cyclones each and every year within bay of bengal maybe some of them major and some of them minors so in india around 8% of land around 8% of land is prone to cyclonic activity means we need to do great preparedness for forthcoming cyclones we need to keep the record of old incident like 2015 there is huge flood uh, great amount of rainfall took place within chennai or within tamil nadu so all such uh, record we need to keep we need to preserve we need to learn and we need to increase our capacity to deal with cyclonic events now what kind of preparedness we require people people were moved to the relief camp by andhra pradesh or tamil nadu government people more than 61000 people were moved to shelter places shelter houses cyclone centers means the eastern coastal region or estates have developed some of the government buildings particularly schools or certain other government uh, uh, public places they have converted into the cyclone shelters they have designed in such a way that if cyclone arises then people can be shifted immediately particularly in dense population region suspension and cut off of power supply so that people can be prevented pedestrian can be prevented from electrocution incident cancellation of 
flights more than 300 flights were cancelled several trains of south region were diverted cancelled chennai airport were also closed for few hours then only restricted allowed for next few hours red alert in those areas in those districts where there were extremely heavy rainfall imd indian meteorological department declared the red alert especially in those district where there were chances of having extremely high rainfall and in other districts imd mark orange and yellow orange particularly for those districts which receive very heavy rainfall and yellow for those district districts which receive high rainfall so high very high rainfall and extremely high rainfall marked as yellow orange red respectively so that state disaster response force or different other security forces defense personnel or fire personnel police personnel that were deployed during the event they should prepare themselves with respect to amount of rainfall with respect to severity of the disaster holiday for the educational institutions so 5 december was declared as the holiday especially for the government schools and further for few days schools likely to be closed uh, may not be able to open because they are entirely submerged within the water and work from home it was advised by the state government that private companies should allow people to work from home now consequences of the cyclone what kind of consequences what kind of impact we notice within the cyclonic activity so the major impact was loss of life around 17 people lost their life during this cyclonic event so the amount of casualty is lesser than 2015 lesser than super cyclonic incident in 1990 of odisha where around 200 people were died but uh, still the amount is significant cannot be ignored destruction of infrastructure a lot of trees were uprooted by very heavy wind more than 100 km per hour swirling winds along with water or great amount of rainfall more than 50 cm in several districts were noticed so destruction of infrastructure further some of the buildings walls were collapsed and uh, lot of electric pole or different other public infrastructure degraded during the sea bed inundation of sea water sea water particularly in coastal areas hit hard and some of the district the coastal regions there was incident of landslide huge landslide also took place in some of the villages means sea water coming or hitting the coastal areas landfall incident also noticed because of wind storm rain storm and wave storm water wave storm as well loss of vegetation means crops mangrove forest trees they were broken or died during this cyclone activity food supplies also restricted means the price of some of the essential commodities like milk reaches 200 rupees the half kg milk price so up to around 100 rupees similarly drinking water drinking water can of 20 liter its price increases up to 100 rupees 
so that's why uh you know below because of lack of food supplies there were increase in the price of most of the essential commodities as well severe disruption in communication transportation lot of cars swept away by running water transportation facility over the road some of the roads were under the construction government of tamil nadu uh, implemented leveling maintenance of the road which was not completed which further created more difficulties so road transportation railway transportation air transportation as well as communication services lot of people are facing lot of people are facing the communication problem their batteries in the mobile are dead because uh, from week the power supply has not reached to and further it will take very long time period for restoration of power supply so communication transportation and various other facilities yeah you can say the normal life was disrupted completely disrupted poor disaster relief yeah during disaster what kind of relief government extended some of the army personnel ndrf national disaster response force rescued through boat rescued through different ways people in local areas in coastal areas additional workforce additional equipment from surrounding districts more than 9 districts in tamil nadu and uh, up to 13 districts in andhra pradesh you know additional workforce and necessary equipments were deployed fire and rescue services police personnel were also involved along with national disaster response force ministers more than 13 ministers were deployed already is officers deputed for extending relief to people and local region so that was about about uh, cyclone preparedness or what kind of efforts made by state or state agencies now consequences consequences we have already done okay so that's all about about the cyclone mechong similarly anti cyclone anti cyclone are also large air masses which at center have highest pressure and towards outer margin of the cyclone or swirling wind we have the lowest pressure so it is just opposite anti cyclone generally developed in temperate region yeah around hot latitude yeah over certain plateaus during winter time period like over the tibetan plateau this anti cyclone activities developed it developed means it is just opposite now what kind of condition arises what kind of conditions are more favorable or suitable for development of tropical cyclone so tropical cyclone first uh they know they are known by different different name in different different regions in indian ocean they are known by tropical cyclone in south china sea or in china towards japan they are known as typhoon in australia they are known as willy willy in us sea they are known as tornado in caribbean sea caribbean sea along the ecuador mexico so here uh in caribbean sea they are known as hurricane so they are known by different different name and different different countries uh provided name as per cycle or schedule pre schedule of 
naming order of these countries. So, these tropical cyclone develop generally over the water bodies. In tropical or torrid regions where temperature existed around 26 to 27 degrees Celsius or even higher than that. They develop over large water bodies by accumulating lot of wind and uh, these cyclones do not develop just over the equator but they develop close to the equator because they also need adequate amount of coronal force. So these are some of the suitable conditions which existed in Bay of Bengal that led to development of Cyclone Mechan. So that's all for today. Thank you very much for your cooperation and support. See you soon and next lecture. Bye bye. Take care.